My name is Danielle. My name is Cassidy. We love you, Grandma. Oh, I love you too, Glamour Girls. Hi everyone, Glamour here again. Welcome back to Tutorial Tuesday. And today we're going to be making this bow. And this is the dress that I made in my last tutorial for Glamour's Princess Doggy Dress. So I need to make a bow for this dress to finish it off. But before I do that, I wanted to thank you once again for watching that commercial and ad right before my video. I know that it can be frustrating at times to sit there waiting for the tutorial to start, but from the bottom of my heart, I appreciate it because it's really helping me to keep this channel a free channel so I can keep bringing you these awesome tutorials. Alrighty guys, let's get started. So what we'll be needing is a hook. It doesn't really matter what size hook you're, you want to use, but I'm using an H 5.0 millimeter hook. And you're going to be needing a tapestry needle and you're going to be needing some scissors. Um, and I'm going to make the, the bow for this dress bigger than this bow because this bow was for my extra, extra small dress that my Princess Kylie wears. And this one is for a small, so I'm going to make the bow a little bit bigger so that it matches the size of the dress. Alrighty guys, let's get started. I forgot to tell you, you'll be needing yarn. <laughs> Alright, so I'm going to be using um, white yarn because I want a white bow. And I'm also going to use pink yarn, so you might want to have two different colors because I did the bow in white and I did the little ruffle in pink. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to chain 51 for the size of bow that I want for the small dress. And I think 51 will be good if you're making a medium dress or even a medium to large dress. So I, because this is going to be a pretty good size bow. I like big bows on, on, on stuff. I like it to really be what pops. All right, so let's go ahead and chain 51 and I will meet you back here. Okay, so I have my 51 chains and the uh, instructions for this tutorial are so super simple, you'll be amazed. Okay, so now what we're going to do is we're just going to make single crochets all along the chains that we just made. Okay, and uh, so go ahead and do that for this first row. Okay, so I want to show you something. I hope you can see it. The light might be too bright. That might appear, if you're new, that that's two more stitches, but it's not. That's the last stitch. This right here is the slip knot that we made at the beginning, okay? So you can tighten that up, and this is your very last stitch right there. So go into there, yarn over, um, and you're going to go through those two, and that's it for that row. And now to start a new row, because we're making single crochets, you only chain up one because that's the height that we need for a single crochet. So chain one, turn your work around, and we're going to go right back into that spot right there. If we were doing double crochets or something, we would not go into there. We would go into the next spot. But for single crochets, we're going to go right back into here. And we're just going to continue with single crochets. Okay, so that's all we do. And when you're done with this row, just repeat what I just showed you, okay? So let's do this for about 10 rows. I think that's about the size of bow that I want. If you're making a little tiny bow like this, like I said, um, I believe I chained 35 and it looks like I only made... Hmm, New message from Danielle. Like, five or six rows, I believe, and then I did the little ruffle. Okay, so go ahead and do this for about 10 rows. That's when I'm going to meet you back here, when I've got my 10th row. I sure hope I have enough yarn, though, because this is all I have left of white. <laughs> so I hope I have enough. So anyway, I'll see you back when I'm on my 10th row. Okay, so I just have one more stitch to go and I'm going to stop there because I'm going to change colors now. And so this is what it should be looking like. This is 10 rows. 
1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, and I'm going to stop there. That's wide enough because that's about what your bow will look like when it's all said and done. Um, so yeah, um, yeah, I had enough yarn, barely. <laughs> all right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to start as if I'm making my single crochet, but I'm going to stop right there with the two loops on my hook. And then I'm going to grab my new color and I'm going to pull that through instead of the white. And then I'm going to come back here and I'm going to tie the two colors together. Okay? And just one little tie is probably all that's needed. Okay, okay so now that we've changed colors, grab both of your tails and let's incorporate that as we single crochet down to this side. We're going to single crochet down to here because I want to end up um, on this end so that when I turn my work around I'm still working on the right side and I'm going to start my ruffles right here. We don't need ruffles on these shorter ends because that's not going to show. Message from Finesse. Oh, that's my daughter texting. Um, so we only need ruffles on the longer part, on the horizontal parts of the bow. Alright, so grab your two tails here and let's just make single crochets down to, down to the bottom, incorporating the two tails as you go. You know, I could have just um, chained one, turned my work around and started the ruffles, but then I'd be working on the wrong side. And to me, there is a difference, the right side and the wrong side. So I'm going to do it this way. I'm going to put two on this end just so that it gets me over. Eh, maybe I'll put three. Yeah, because no, yeah, three. Usually you put three stitches in a corner so that you can start turning your work to the other side. So I put three there and so now we're going to start on our ruffles, the little ruffly part of our bow. Okay, so to do that I'm going to chain five. One, two, three, four, and five. And we're going to go into the very next stitch and slip stitch. Okay. And then do five. One, two, three, four, and five. And then go into the next stitch and slip stitch. <laughs> all right. So we're going to do that all the way down. And then when you get to this end, you can incorporate this tail as you single crochet this way and then turn your work around and then make the ruffle over here and then meet me when you get to this end when you're all done all right okay so here i am at the end and i just changed my five and i'm going to slip stitch right here and be done with it chain an extra one and then i'm going to suggest that you leave about a two to three yard tail because we're going to use that to not only sew the bow on, but also to um, make this little pink part that goes around the bow, okay? So let's go ahead and do that. Okay, so now that you chained one, you can pull your long tail all the way through and finish this off. There you go. And so this is what it should be looking like at this point. Okay, and so now what we're going to do is I'm going to show you how to put your bow together. Um, go ahead and get yourself a tapestry needle. I'm gonna, this is the right side, so I'm going to turn it to the wrong side. And we're basically going to, let's, let's, um, Fold this in half and find your center. Um, let me get a stitch marker. Okay, so there's my center and it's about right there. All right. 
on the wrong side. So the reason I'm putting it on the wrong side is so that I know where to fold this. See, we want to fold it evenly, okay? And then I'm going to show you what to do. Get your tapestry needle and we'll get started. Okay, so I have my tapestry needle all threaded and um, here's where we left off. There's my stitch marker. You really don't need to leave the stitch marker there anymore now that you have found your center and you have these evenly divided. Um, you can go ahead and take that out. You don't even really need a stitch marker if you want to just eyeball um, the center. And make sure you keep these even. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to weave my yarn in and out. There's one side. Now let's fold this back over. And we're going to go over to this side now. Okay, so now we are going to weave in and out on this side, okay? So the reason I had you do that is because now we are going to pull on that. We're going to tug on that. And that is going to help us to get that shape so that when we wrap this around to do that center part, it'll stay a little easier for us. <clears throat> okay, so there's that. And this is the wrong side. And so now I'm going to turn it to the right side. Hold on to this nice and taut now that you have it squished together like that. And so now what I do is I just come around and I find my center and I just wrap this all the way around. Fix the bow the way you think you like it um, as you're going. But basically, I just wrap this around several times. So basically, this is what we're doing. We're doing this part of it right now. So that's how thick I like it. So just keep doing this. And I'll meet you when you've got it the way you want it to look, okay? Okay, so that looks good to me. And so I'm going to leave mine like that. And I'm going to go on to the wrong side now. And hold on to it nice and tight. And I am just going to um, secure it back here. Okay, and so now we are just going to attach it to our dress. Okay. So let me go ahead and grab my dress and I'll show you how I'm going to do it, okay? Okay, so if you're putting this on the doggy dress, then you can follow these instructions. If you're just making a bow for another project, then you're pretty much done. You just leave this tail so that you can sew it on whatever project you're going to sew it on. Me, however, I'm going to sew this on Karis's dress. So right here was the center of where we put our drawstring. And this isn't the most um, sturdy place where I could put it, but I actually didn't um, leave a, that great of a place to put it. So I am going to use that right there. And I am just going to go back and forth. Oops, keep moving the camera. I have no idea how close this camera is to my face. <laughs> okay, so I'm just going to do that back and forth to secure it, okay? And then I'm going to do something else so that the bow isn't flopping around so much. Here in a second. So there's that. That's pretty much all it really needs to be nice and secure because we're going to further secure it over here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to kind of make my way this way to the dress over here to the side. Okay. And I'm going to go up on the bow right here so that, because if we don't do that, the bow is going to be flopping around like this. 
So this is the part that I sewed onto the bow. So I'm just going through some of these um, yarn strands, making my way back to this side, making sure not to uh, sew the dress together by accident. <laughs> okay. Okay, make sure you don't accidentally sew your drawstring into place because then you won't be able to uh, to tighten it and loosen it when you want. Okay, so that is actually pretty good. So now I'm just going to secure it. Now go ahead and just grab some scissors. Leave yourself a tiny bit of a tail so you can still weave that little tail in. And we're finished. So here it is. And you see you still have room to draw the drawstring together and you can make your bow underneath here there see how adorable that is yay <laughs> and I am going to post a link probably right here and if not here I'm going to put it down below so that you will have the link for the rose and the link for the leaf because that's what it should look like when it's all said and done right there all right guys i sure hope you enjoyed this tutorial i sure enjoyed making it with you and i just want to thank you for crocheting along with me and uh, don't forget to subscribe so that you can be alerted for my next tutorial which is going to be some doggy undies Woohoo! <laughs> And don't forget that this is always the place where you can come and enjoy crocheting along with me because everything here is always made and taught by me with love. I love you guys. Bye!